Bonjour, my name is Maria Turchaninov, and I'm going to answer a few questions about my upcoming novel, Nevavakka. It's one of hard work, silence, and natural beauty. Anna, the woman in the poem in the beginning of the book, is closest to who I am, but other characters became very dear to me as I wrote about them. One of them is Otilia, the little girl who is raised on the farm by her grandfather. And another one is Alina, who writes letters to her friend in Helsinki and dreams about contributing to the future of the nation of Finland. It's hard to name them. When I was doing research for the novel, I realized that it wasn't a set system of beliefs, which we sort of think today because we compare it to a religion, but it wasn't an organized religion at all. It was more that in every village, uh, everyone had their own set of beliefs. And sometimes the systems overlapped from village to village and sometimes they didn't. And it was often that people saw something in the forest that they didn't understand or didn't know what it was. And then they came back with a story and together the inhabitants would interpret what it was that this person had seen. In early Finnish mythology, uh, everything was alive with spirits. It was a mythology of animism. So there were spirits inhabiting the forests, but also individual trees, springs, marshes. And these spirits could be benevolent or malevolent. And it was important to stay on their good side and treat them with respect uh, by offering to them, for instance, giving them offerings and always being mindful of their presence while moving in the forest. These spirits were generally thought to be responsible for things that happened that people had no other explanations for. For instance, famine, drought, illnesses, uh, and then in order to try and control the uncontrollable people uh, offered, to, you know, gave offerings to these spirits to try and, and make their lives a little bit better. I don't really see Nevabakka as cursed, but the marshland or bog close to the farm uh, is off limits. Whoever touches it will lose that that they love the most. Honestly, this view of nature as our dominion has its basis in the Christian church. It has taught us that humans are the crown of God's creation and um, therefore we must use nature as we please. It's our duty to christen the earth and uh, make it good and the way for us to do it uh, is to farm, to tame it. I do wonder if our relationship to nature would be very different uh, today if the church had never come to the Nordic countries. It's the study of ecology and the environment but without removing humans from the equation, instead putting humans in the center of uh, these systems. I think the threat is that we will forget who we are and where we have come from, and that we are animals, and that we are not se separate from or apart from nature, but we are nature just as much as anything else is. Well, we have tried very hard to do that as a society and uh, look where that has led us. I feel connected to most forests I spend time in, but also to the uh, Finnish archipelago. I think the landscape of my soul is the forest of southwestern Finland, where I spent every summer and most weekends as a child. 
There's a wonderful song by Mikael Vie, sung by Monika Setterlund, called Ska nya röster sjunga. And I would translate that as Shall new voices sing. And it's about how as our voices dim and end, there will always be new voices to pick up the song about justice and peace and love. And I had one word in my mind as I wrote Nevavakka, and that was love. Love between generations, love between humans, and love between humans and nature. A mutual love.